Hi, my name is Martin Williams, and I'm an entrepreneur and coach dedicated to helping people reach their full potential. These next 30 days, we are going to be going through the classic self-help book, The Science of Getting Rich, written by Wallace Waddles. The book was one of the main inspirations for the movie, The Secret. The Science of Getting Rich, even though it talks about material wealth, goes far beyond simply amassing money and possessions. It is more about learning how to think and act in a way that brings you more of what you want in life. At its heart, this is a mindset book. I think you'll get a great deal out of the study, and I couldn't be more happier to bring my commentary to you. Chapter 1. The Right to be Rich Waddles talks about the purpose of wealth. The purpose of wealth, according to him, is to use and develop yourself to your highest potential. And in his opinion, you can't do that being poor. Now, if you're poor, that often means that you have to use your time working a job or doing work in order to survive, in order to make ends meet, to pay your bills, pay your rent, pay your car note, so on. And that goes beyond just being poor. The average American works from paycheck to paycheck. They live from paycheck to paycheck. And if they were to suddenly stop working, within one to two months, their life would be completely disrupted. So that means that there's very little time for personal development. And even if you have money, you can't necessarily sit on a lot of it too long because you have inflation, you have rising cost of different things, and this makes it really difficult to get to a place where you no longer have to work and or bring money in. So you develop yourself by making use of more things. The more things that you make use of, the more you develop yourself. Now, Waddles talks about the chief objective of life being development. And just like a construction company develops a piece of land into a multi-million dollar complex, we had the responsibility to develop ourselves to our highest potential. So what I got from this first chapter is that it's necessary to move from uh, wealth being a luxury to being a requirement, right? The requirement isn't for us to just have money just to have it, but for that wealth to allow us to live in a way that helps us attain complete development in mind, body, and soul. Waddles commented that it's a sin to be content with less than what you want. If you want more, not only should you have it, it's your duty and responsibility to attain it. It's very interesting to even say those words because that's not how I grew up, and I'm betting that's not how you grew up as well. You probably learned, as I did, that having money or being wealthy is a luxury, a blessing, and it's not something that happens to everyone, so you should be fortunate, or you should feel fortunate that you have more money than the the average person. Now, wealth is a blessing. Don't get me wrong. It's a blessing to have enough. It's a blessing to be able to go to your refrigerator and seafood (laughs) and, you know, to live in a place that is comfortable, a place that is um, sheltered from the elements, right? That's a blessing. And I don't take that lightly. But what Waddles is talking about here is basically moving beyond that and seeing wealth as a right, seeing it as a requirement of life. And when you see wealth as a requirement, It changes the way that you approach everything in life. It changes the way that you approach your work. It changes the way that you approach, you know, pretty much every area of your life, you know, your recreation, your family, everything. Because now it's not so much getting wealthy as something that, well, it might happen, it might not happen. It'd be great if it did, but if it doesn't, that's okay. 
That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about making wealth a requirement. It's your duty to become wealthy. And again, it's not to just have money to have it, but it's to obtain the fullest development of yourself. And I'll go into that a little more. Okay? Being rich is a right. Just like the right to, you know, our freedoms here in America, the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to move about how we want, right? Freedom to live where we want to live, freedom to drive what we want to drive, freedom to, you know, just have the opinions that we have. Being rich is another one of those rights. We have a right to be rich. And I got again, I got to be honest, I never thought of it like that. But when you start thinking of it like that, when you start thinking of wealth as something that is almost inevitable, right? Because you take ownership of that place. It's like you you take ownership of okay, I'm going to be wealthy one day, right? Because I have a right to be. I'm not looking at it as something that's luck or happenstance, or it'd be nice if it happens. You know, I don't think of having the freedom of speech being something that would be nice if it happens. No, I have a right to that, right? And putting wealth on that same level really changes the way you think, okay? Success in life is becoming what you want to be, says Waddles. You become what you want by making use of things, And you can only make use of things when you are rich enough to buy them. Wanting to live more abundantly is normal. It's normal to want more. It's normal to want a better car, a better home, a better school for your kids. It's normal to want better clothes and and to want better experiences. It's normal to want to travel. These things are normal. Don't ever, again, think that you're abnormal for wanting better things in life because you're not abnormal. It's very normal. Because, in my opinion, the, the God in us desires more. The God in us desires better so we can experience more. Okay? If you grew up poor or grew up not having enough or grew up having long stretches of lack, you've already experienced that. Why would you want to experience it again? The only only time that a person continually thinks that way is because they think that they're just doomed to, to live that way, right? They think that, well, you know, it's only a matter of time before whatever I have is taken from me. And that's a totally like wrong way to think. You have a right to be rich, but you only experience it when you exercise that right to be rich. So I think there are some people who try to make you feel abnormal for one thing more, but they're the ones who got it wrong. Waddles finishes chapter one by explaining what it means to live fully in mind, body, and soul. And this is the only way that a person gains the fullest expression of life. To live fully in body, you need good food, comfortable clothes, comfortable shelter, and freedom from excessive toil. Imagine if you had to work your fingers to the bone just to have those previous three things, to have food, clothing, and shelter, right? Imagine having to work and basically drain all the energy out of your body on a daily basis just to have those three things. Now, some of you don't have to imagine because you're living that way, right? It would be hard to live like your fullest expression because deep down, you really want something that's less taxing if you're going to be honest with yourself. Right? If you're honest with yourself, you don't want to live like that or work like that for the rest of your life. Right? So that that first part, living fully in body, means eating well, dressing well, and living well, and you know, living in a comfortable place where you lay your head down at night. And not having to work again yourself almost to death just to have food, clothing, and shelter. The second part is to live fully in in mind. Waddle says that you need 
good books, and I would add videos, audios, and courses, and the time to study them, as well as the opportunity to travel to different lands and interact with people who are also pursuing a higher expression of life. Waddles also adds that wealth in mind includes being surrounded by art and beauty to the extent that the, per- that the person is capable of appreciating it. Excuse me. When I lived in Philadelphia, I worked briefly in the Museum of Art. And it was a lot of fun because I got to see all the exhibits for free. I actually got paid to see them, if we're being honest. Nothing makes you feel wealthy in mind quite like looking at priceless works of art. There's something about appreciating art that does something to your mind and to your heart. And when I went to school in Norfolk, Virginia, it was the same thing. I had the opportunity to go to the art museum there. They actually had free days for students. So I was able to go there and, and you know, that museum is beautiful as well. To live fully in soul, Waddle said that a man must have love in his life. And love is denied its fullest expression by poverty. Now, there are, of course, exceptions to this rule. There are people who live at or below the poverty line who do experience love. But I understand also what he's talking about, because how many times have we heard that financial problems are the leading cause of divorce, certainly in America? It's very difficult to live in love and peace where there is constant financial uncertainty and lack. A human's highest Happiness is found in the bestowal of benefits upon those he loves. Put simply, we're at our happiest when we're giving to others. And love is the most natural and spontaneous expression of giving. And when you don't have anything to give, it's very hard to fill your place in the world, whether it be as a mother or father, as a spouse, as a family member, as a friend, It's very difficult to give when you don't have anything to give. So to summarize the chapter, Waddles really resets the mind of the average person to not only think about being wealthy, but to see wealth as a right, as a birthright. To see wealth as something that not only you can have, but something that you're supposed to have something that you're supposed to obtain. Now, a lot of people might say, well, that's not true because look at how, look at how few people actually have wealth. And I would counter in saying it doesn't mean that it's not a right. It just means that they haven't pursued it as such. How many people do you know pursue wealth as a right as opposed to something that might happen, might be okay if it happens? but really pursuing wealth as something that is a birthright. But when you start to look at it like that, as I've said before, everything changes. So I want to thank you for listening to chapter one of this deep dive into the science of getting rich. Stay tuned for chapter two as we go deeper into this book. And if you are enjoying this, please let me know in the comment section Uh, If you have any questions, if you want to start a discussion, please feel free to do so. I'd be more than happy to engage in that with you. But for now, I'm Martin Williams. Thank you for listening.